All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for once again tuning in for, the, for our Concrete uh, Ontario webinar. Uh, today's topic is Concrete Shoot Secondary Restraint Methods. Um, it's a very hot topic uh, last few months in the industry, and uh, we're very excited to be providing this webinar today. As always, before uh, we get started, your facilitators, myself, Alan Carey, and uh, Bart Cantor is also here, uh, the president of Concrete Ontario. And before we do get started, uh, as always, some housekeeping items. Um, today's webinar will be a little shorter. Um, we are anticipating more questions than usual. So it'll be about 30 to 45 minutes um, with 15 to 20 minutes at the end for questions. All participants are currently muted and uh, will remain that way for the remainder of the uh, webinar. If you do have a question, please use the GoToWebinar questions pane at the right side of your screen and type in your questions. Uh, as I mentioned, we will be addressing all questions at the end. Um, the webinar uh, will be recorded and we are going to be posting it on the Concrete Ontario YouTube channel. Um, and to make it easier for all participants, we will be sending out a PDF version of the presentation and a link to the YouTube uh, video channel um, for people to watch the video afterwards. The pre presenter today is Ryan Bisson, the sales manager of L London Machinery. Ryan has been with London for over eight years. His current duties include overseeing sales for North and South America. And Ryan is a current board member of Concrete Ontario, as well as the uh, chair of the Transportation Committee. So welcome, Bart. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Thank you for coming in this morning, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, it's Bart Cantors here. I'll start off uh, just because the association has been receiving a lot of inquiries from both members and from Ministry of Transportation Carrier Enforcement. So we're going to go through and just quickly cover off the agenda. So quick overview of what some of the concerns from the various departments of transportation have been in regards to the secondary restraint of chutes on ready mix trucks. And then we'll get into some of the options that are available for addressing these issues. So great. So just to start off here with a quick overview on Ontario. Uh, we do represent about one-third of the Canadian marketplace when it comes to ready-mix concrete. So we've got about 10 million cubic meters of concrete that's produced annually in the province. Uh, as part of our plant certification program, we do certify uh, over 270 concrete plants, and we issue truck stickers for over 3,400 trucks in the province. Um, bungee cords have been used as a secondary shoot restraint device for decades, uh, and quite frankly, it's what most people have seen. Uh, really, in the last two or three years, there's been questions raised by the various DOTs in regards to whether that's appropriate or not. So we'll, we'll go through and discuss those issues. So we're gonna start off with a few pictures that have been supplied to us by carrier enforcement. Uh, so these pictures came to our transportation committee, uh, which Ryan is now the chair of. So we'll just go through and have a quick look at a few pictures just so that we're all up to speed. So having a quick look at this picture, we see a standard ready mix truck, three chutes, bungees being used as the primary securement. Um, so again, the issue that the DOTs are raising is what is the quality of that material that's being used as a secondary restraint or whether it's really secondary restraint or primary restraint. That's one of the critical issues that we've been in discussions with them. Uh, moving ahead a little, the other issue that was specifically raised uh, in this pic particular picture by the carrier enforcement was the attachment of secondary items to the ready mix truck. So you can see the, the hopper and the sock for a belt placement. Uh, it's just bungee to the fender. Uh, we've also received comments from carrier enforcement regarding things like washout buckets or enviro guards or other supplementary equipment admixtures. Uh, again, the MTO's position is that bungees cannot be used to secure those devices to the truck. That there needs to be some other mechanism of securing those items to the truck. So we'll come back to that. Again, having another look here. So it looks a little older truck, a little more used. But uh, again, typical industry equipment that's being used out in the field right now. Uh, the issue here relates to the second shoot. So the fact that there's only, there's one bungee missing on the second of the three chutes. Um, so again, that was identified by an inspector as being an issue during a roadside stop. 
Uh, again, when it comes to the shoot frame, uh, we'll come back and talk about this a little later, but the industry's position has always been that the chute is, is restrained to the truck via the clip on the frame, that you drop the chute in, you rotate it around, and that it's that locking mechanism on the edge that holds the chute together. And that's really the critical issue that we've been dealing with the uh, various DOT agencies with is, is that sufficient as the primary securement method? So we'll move on. Uh, we, we do have uh, some front discharge trucks in the province as well. So here you've got an example of a front discharge truck. Uh, this is acceptable as far as the carrier enforcement is concerned. You've got a pin on the bottom and uh, a spring and clamp system on the top that's uh, holding the chute in place. So again, that's acceptable. Uh, next picture is unacceptable. So again, here there's no pin holding the chute at the bottom and it's just a bungee that's holding, in this case, the two chutes uh, to the, the fender and frame of the truck. So the carrier enforcement's indicated that that's, that's definitely not acceptable as far as they're concerned. Okay, so uh, Ryan Bisson here. Um, DOT carrier enforcement concerns, equipment manufacturers and concrete producers, have re we've received feedback and concerns by the DOT in multiple provinces regarding the use of bungees in connection with concrete chutes. Uh, that in an event of a rollover, the cradle, the chute cradle itself, they're stating would not be sufficient enough to restrain the concrete chutes. The bungees are not acceptable as primary securement for concrete chutes, even though we state that it is secondary, they believe it is still a primary uh, securement. That bungee cords with safe working loads stamped on the bungee are not acceptable since there's no practical way of determining their reduced uh, effectiveness when they are damaged. Now us at the Transportation uh, Committee, our position, uh, Concrete Ontario Transportation uh, Committee's understanding on this issue is that the bungee cords that are used by the manufacturers of ready mix concrete trucks in North America are not designed, as I stated before, as primary methods of securement of the chutes on the concrete trucks. Instead, the cradle that the chutes are loaded into is designed to be the primary method of securement. In this situation, the bungee cords that are commonly used by the industry are supplied to provide additional, additional secondary securement and peace of mind. Now, really what position is correct in the uh, DOT's mind? Yeah, it really, it really it really comes down comes to down to none. Yeah, yeah, they they have the enforcement ability. Um, so ultimately, it's MTO carrier enforcement that's going to be responsible for uh, making the final call, and that's really the difficult situation that the industry has been put in over the last couple of years. So I would say probably about two years ago, we had uh, a gentleman from the. Uh, DOT come in to review our, give a plant tour of our facility and give, uh, show examples of shoot securement, um, which you can see there, just our plant. Next slide. And we gave a, we gave an understanding on what, what was expected, what we were doing to, uh, go forward. Unfortunately, that gentleman, uh, later retired. So now we're back, uh, at square one again, uh, with, with the DOT, um, but uh, in regards to their carrier enforcement concerns, bungee cords or tarps are not suitable for use as tie downs and are equally unsuited to have an assigned WLL rating. There is no intention to prohibit the use of these devices as supplementary restraint for the lightweight cargo and equipment when they're used to apply the 20% downward force. They should not be used to restrain cargo from moving or shifting forward, rearward, or sideways. So just to give you, a, the next couple slides are basically just showing some of what existing, everyone's using on their existing fleet. Um, you know, this is our, our, bun, our bungee that we were providing uh, to the industry up until about a year or so ago. Um, 
Now we've come up with, our engineering group has come up with uh, some designs. Next slide. This was our first design uh, prototype. Um, now, as you can see, the weight rating is a little high on that, much exceeding the weight of the chute itself. Um, and it only had one rating on the uh, strap itself. So our next design, which you'll see on currently trucks now being produced out of London machinery, is the weight rating dropped down to 250 pounds. There's two weight ratings on the top part and bottom part of the, uh, the strap itself. And we've, it's considered a full load rating because our issue with the existing one was the, the, what we call a snappy hooker was bolted on um, and was not part of the rating. So we have actually designed, engineering had designed a uh, hook sewn in. So the actual whole strap itself is, is uh, rated for 250 pounds. Now these are, one of the concerns that was brought up was the the end of the uh, strap itself would sometimes fall through so this is our new design going forward where we've now had it sewn on so it almost creates somewhat of a handle so there's no no opportunity for it to fall through uh, the clamp itself and uh, it gives the driver an opportunity to grab onto a handle to tighten the shoe this is just an example of what it would look like. We don't run into this too often in Ontario, um, but uh, an example of what it would look like on a fender mount uh, chute. Um, again, it's there would be obviously two per chute coming out of our factory. And the next one, these are currently trucks that are leaving our facility now, uh, two per chute um, and uh, a three, three chute cradle uh, it's pretty straightforward it's just basically replacing every single bungee with a rated strap okay thanks Ryan so back in August uh, we issued a technical bulletin to all members basically the transportation committee uh, got together we had a couple meetings with uh, carrier enforcement here in the province uh, to look at the prototypes that were developed looked at what London machinery had currently been putting out and we went through and addressed a few items. So jump into the next slide. Uh, really what we were trying to ensure was that the, that the new design that the industry was proposing met the Ministry of Transportation's critical concerns and that we received confirmation of that, that, that the prototypes that you've seen in, these, in this PowerPoint presentation address the primary concerns. Uh, next issue is that uh, Carrier enforcement indicated that given the, the fact that the chute weighs significantly less than the 115 or whatever it was, kgs. 250 pounds. Uh, yeah. That there was only the requirement for one strap per chute. So from an enforcement standpoint, one strap is sufficient. Now from an industry standpoint and an ease of use standpoint, we typically have had two. Um, so again, that, that raises another question. Uh, third point here is that there's no specific location where the uh, restraint device has to go on the chute. So again, you're free to put it in the middle, put it at either end, put it at both ends. Uh, it really comes down to the equipment supplier and how they've designed their equipment. So for London, uh, the common practice is to put it at both ends of the chute. Correct. So. Uh, at that meeting, we also confirmed that the existing bungees can be used in combination with the new securement devices. So really what that means is that if we had two bungees on an existing chute, there's only a need to update one bungee in order to be fully compliant. Per chute. Per chute. So again, you've got the ability, uh, when it comes to new equipment, London shipping them out with all compliant straps, but you've got an option here. Uh, concrete producers are also free to utilize their own securement system provided that the working load limit is clearly indicated and exceeds the weight of the chute. So again, uh, this is one solution that London Machinery has come forward. Uh, some members have indicated that they've made their own modifications to, to the trucks. Again, from carrier enforcement standpoint, that's fine. They just want to see that it has a rated, it has a rating and a strap on it that indicates what the, what the working load limit is and that it conforms to the weight of the chute. Ultimately, uh, what does it mean? Uh, so ultimately, if, 
if the carrier enforcement determines that they have concerns, they have the ability to issue a fine. They have the ability to issue an unsecured load charge. Uh, they have to, the ability to take your truck out of service until that issue is dealt with. It also has, can have very significant impacts on your CBOR points. Um, so again, it is a, a very big issue for the industry. And really what we're trying to do is work with carrier enforcement to, to work through this whole implementation process. So what should we be doing now? And this is really the, the key point that the technical bulletin was bringing up back in August. Um, so again, we are encouraging all members to speak to uh, their ready mix suppliers or their equipment suppliers about what, what your options are. Uh, replace all damaged or worn bungee straps with systems that meet uh, DOT requirements. So again, if you're going through as part of your typical maintenance process, upgrading equipment, repairing equipment, you want to make sure that you're uh, putting in materials that conform to DOT requirements. And then last issue, when it comes to scheduling replacement of old bungees, it's, it's common practice to uh, repair. These are wear items, so they will be replaced. So again, we want to integrate these new systems as part of your ongoing truck maintenance programs. So while we were in that meeting uh, back in the summer with uh, DOT, they, I, we brought up the question of a grandfathering period. period. And uh, it was an immediate no. There is no grandfathering. They do not acknowledge, uh, DOT does acknowledge that they have not ever had an incident of chutes detaching from the trucks uh, with the current uh, bungee straps. Um, but enforcement will depend on each individual case and the officer involved um, in regards to existing bungee straps and, and uh, enforcement will back obviously the officer in every single case. Um, yeah, so the real, the real challenge for us as an industry here is that when the MTO, or sorry, the DOT, keep it generic, mm -hmm. is identifying uh, a potential safety concern, then, then they can't have written positions that, that go against that. So again, since they're identifying this as a potential safety concern uh, for road users, um, they, they can't come out and issue grandfathering periods. Now, that being said, uh, there will be, re we've been assured that there will be reasonableness when it comes to implementing these requirements and what we're strongly encouraging members is to view the condition of their existing bungee straps and again look at newer options when it comes to replacing those and not have worn and damaged equipment out there that does have the potential to have a safety Im implication to it. Yeah. Um, going forward also in regards to any uh, issues with DOT or any um, uh, parking of trucks, et cetera, for any shoot restraint incidences, please, uh, members are encouraged to take pictures and uh, report those to the association so we can keep track of uh, existing complaints. Uh, in regards to uh, shoot restraints, CBR and all common topics discussed at the committee meetings were We'd love to obviously have anyone else interested in uh, joining the transportation committee uh, where members are always encouraged to participate. And if you are willing to uh, join, please contact Bart or myself. Uh, and we'd love to have you uh, sit in on uh, some of the meetings and assist with some of these uh, ongoing issues. Great, so now at this point, we'd like to open it up to uh, some general questions. So we'll start off with the first one. Uh, what happens in the winter when these devices, uh, are they susceptible to freezing conditions and cold weather? Now, that right there, I, I guess we, it's still, we've, we have not run them through the winter. So, you know, we were under the, uh, we were looking at a solution, a quick solution. We don't believe that it should have an issue, but again, we have not run these through the winter. We're, we wanted to make sure uh, we got a solution out there because we were forced by the DOT to come up with a solution. Um, we came up with a solution. Um, and if 
we're not saying it's right or wrong, but it was accepted by DOT as a correct solution. So unfortunately, time will tell. We have not run these through the winter to be able to tell if these uh, these will uh, have issues with uh, weather related. Okay. All right, uh, the next question we have to word correctly, but uh, from a cost standpoint, uh, what kind of percentage increase, well, what's the cost difference between the existing bunch, don't get dollar specific, but what's yep. the? Yeah, really the cost from existing uh, bungees to current new style straps is roughly, they're $4 more than what we've been uh, currently uh, uh, offering, so it's it's really not as significant as uh, as what we as people assume. It's not a fifty dollars strap, you know. By any means, it's it's fairly uh, sig insignificant the cost. Okay. Uh, okay. Got a few more questions coming in. Uh, will one will one satisfactory strap work for all free shoots if it's properly fastened to the frame of the truck? So that was that was a question that was brought up um, at our meeting with the DOT. Um, they had brought it up of one strap secured to the frame of the truck and securing all three shoots. Now we all know that the cradles of the if you were to take the chute and pull it forward and put pressure on pulling it forward from securing it to the truck frame, it would take it out of that uh, primary securement on the cradle itself of the lip. So um, we didn't note that to them. I didn't tell, we didn't really tell DOT that, but uh, it is a possible concern of tying it to the truck frame. Um, you wanna make sure the chutes when they're in the cradle are always the pressure is being pulled back so it sits in that lip. Okay, uh, next question. Has inspection criteria been created for the new straps and what what deems the existing straps defective? I guess, you know, do you, there wasn't really anything stated in regards to that in our meeting with them. Yeah, really when it, when it came right down to it, the the DOT was clearly indicating that they're not certifying individual components. They, they basically said our criteria is uh, show us that it has, you've got the necessary testing to show that the, the strap can take the rated load and show us that, that that rating is higher than the load of the um, chute that you're actually restraining. Um, in regards to the defective strap, um, that's their primary concern is that any defects on an existing bungee uh, reduce its structural capacity and there's really no way for them to accurately determine what that reduction is. Therefore, they don't accept it at all. Correct. Okay. Uh, next question relates to availability. Um, you've indicated that uh, these straps being used on new equipment, what is the current availability for retrofits? Uh, right now we have, we have um, significant amounts of straps uh, in our facility to provide on all new trucks going forward, as well as any existing fleet, uh, any concerns on uh, through parts, uh, they're readily available uh, uh, as we speak right now. And again, as Bart stated before, it was on existing fleets, there is there is not a need. We made a decision at the factory, continue with two new sh straps per chute. That was just a decision going forward uh, for stocking purposes, but the DOT did accept one, one new strap and one bungee per chute. That was, that was pl uh, enough to uh, appease them. Uh, because of the rating of a uh, 250 250 pounds per strap, uh, well exceeds the weight of the chute itself. Okay. All right. Next question. 
can we switch out our old style bungee straps for new ones if the truck is only six months old? <laughs> These are warranty on the straps. Is the question there? Yeah. So I, that that would have to be some, uh, you know I I'm not sure about that that one yet. That that is uh, that is something that has to be. Uh, uh, discussed internally. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you on that one right now. Okay, so we'll leave that to individual manufacturers. And again, um, as an association, we're, we're just stressing what the concerns are. We have had members that have been receiving unsecured load charges, and as an industry, we've got to try and address this moving forward. There is no, is there a due date for changing over to new straps? Uh, there is no due date. It was more so with us producing units from the factory new now with the straps, it will create um, the officers to start looking at trucks that have bungees. They were they were not giving a due date per se. They was more so as as needed if you were to change out a bungee, change it over to the new style. Um, they wanted it done sooner than later. It was not, uh, as we stated before, there was no grandfathering by any means. It was uh, sooner than later. Yeah, the real concern with carrier enforcement was they wanted to see that the industry was actually addressing their concerns and moving forward. So by developing new secondary restraining systems, we're addressing that concern. Again, um, we, we have a transportation seminar every spring uh, we'll have a look. We we'll, were speaking to carrier enforcement prior to our our uh, May transportation seminar uh, to see where we're at um, from their standpoint. Uh, the unofficial word that we were given was, as long as we see that there's there's movement by the industry in addressing this concern, it's not going to be identified as a specific item that every enforcement officer should be looking for on every truck. So uh, we. We don't have a specific grandfathering date, but we're having some reasonableness when it comes to how this will be enforced. So really what we've been told verbally is that uh, as long as the truck's in good condition and the industry is taking steps to uh, implement these new restraining devices, then they'll continue to work with us. That's why it's so critical that if you are receiving uh, issues out on the road and, and you're getting unsecured load charges, uh, the transportation committee really needs to know uh, what's going on out there so that we can try and address specific issues in individual regions. Okay. I think that uh, concludes the questions that we received. Okay. If there are any further questions, um, you can always forward them to Bart or Ryan. Um, to address at the Transportation Committee. I'm sure there's going to be follow-up questions that people can think of later on. And um, as people identify more issues, it can be brought to the Transportation Committee uh, for them to address it. In terms of what's next for the webinar series, uh, December 12th, we've decided to do the cold weather concreting. Uh, we're still working on the seasonal load issue. Um, we're looking for some contacts, so that will be done now on February 20th. And uh, January 17th, we do have the uh, preparing for MOE plant inspections we uh, webinar. Um, so we do have two consultants coming in for that one. So we encourage you to uh, register for these future seminar uh, webinars. And uh, thank you again for tuning in this morning. Thank you to Ryan. Thank you to Bart. And uh, thank you to everyone for again tuning in. Uh, we will be sending out the presentation and the YouTube link uh, in the coming week. And uh, have a great day. Thank you.